Yeah, g'day. Um, somebody just give me a bit of feedback whether this audio is actually working. Um, sorry about that little glitch. For some reason, after four attempts, four successful attempts to rehearse this, of course, once I actually tried to go live, it didn't want to. Well, welcome very much to my live stream. Just quickly check back to the. Oh, that doesn't work. Doesn't like it. I'll just show you my my desk for now while I check the audio is working. Thanks for the feedback. Uh, that's great, guys. Appreciate it. Okay, back to the program. So here I am in the workshop. I've got two tasks for today. One is uh, trying out my new live stream setup, and two is I've make something because I want to make it a bit more interesting for you guys. So basically until now, I used a, uh, basic, a fully software based uh, streaming system based on OBS Studios. Uh, I had all my cameras feeding through uh, adapter cards, video capture cards, uh, this doing all the mixing and stuff and all the audio and I seem to have quite a few problems with it. Uh, it seemed quite unreliable and it was pretty nerve-wracking. Like when Doric and Kurt were here, I think three minutes before I went live, it, I didn't have any audio. So yeah, so that's the reason why I've decided to buy this uh, this hardware switcher. It came up quite cheap secondhand. I like buying secondhand gear, saves it ending, ending up in the trash. Uh, it's a very nice unit and it does all hardware switching. So hopefully I'll get better at my at my live streams from here on in. So that's that. Now the second thing I want to do today, let me just, I'm going to be using a second camera back here and we're going to use the, the old Bolly manual lathe, do a quick job on the Maho milling machine, quick bit of heat treatment and then finish off, whoop, quick bit of heat treatment and then finish off here on the Clarkson grinder. So that's the plan. Let me just set this set up here to show you what I'm going to do. This is uh, also a bit of a challenge getting the whole <laughs> when you're working alone in a in a studio like this, right? So that's going to be camera one. So, what's the job today? Well, Andy Pugh made this nice cast iron. Uh, adapter plate to put D uh, to put number three cam lock items onto the mill table. And I still need to make the cams to, to pull to pull the pins in closed. They go in here. Now I also need to mill some slots, but that's a job for another day. Now the cams on the lathe have a have a um, uh, square drive to them. So I'd, I'd like to make the cams with a square drive as well and that's why I need a square hole. So how do you make a square hole? Well, for a hole like this, let me just zoom you in. So for a hole like this, you start off by getting, taking out most of the material with just a clearance drill on the inside. And then to cut the square, the most common way to do it is with a rotary, bro a rotary brooch. And that is nothing more than a form tool in the shape that you want your hole put into a, into a free to rotate device, but with about a degree of offset so that it uh, gyrates as it goes into the hole. And therefore, the, all you need to make the thing cut is a little bit of back relief on the cutting edge on both sides. And you want a little bit of dish in the, in the, in the front just to get a nice sharp cutting edge. And that's what I'm going to make today. It's just one of the tool bits to fit into a rotary brooch. Nice and simple job. Shouldn't take me more than about five minutes or maybe an hour. So, well, just uh, I'll switch you back to the overview. Wait a minute. I hit fade to black, sorry. 
just still getting used to this stuff. So starting off here on the bolly, I've got a bit of drill rod or silver steel. Bit of drill rod or silver steel. Uh, unfortunately, it's a bit thick. Let me just take that up a bit. There we go. So this is a bit thick, I think it's 14 millimeter. So first let's take it down. Now, one thing I have to say, I can't duck the audio with this current setup. So whenever I turn a machine on, you're just gonna have to turn down your own audio. I do have a plan of how to do that, but I need a full network before I can do it. So let's go. As I said, I need a wee bit of a dish in the end here, uh, but I'll probably do most of it on the grinder a bit later. Let's uh, zoom out of it. Uh, tools here, that'll do. And taking it down to 10 millimeters. So just set up and find the, the diameter. Yeah, I had a look, I didn't have any 10 millimeter drill rods, so. Oh well. I like using this lathe. 828. Just set the dial to 82, and let's be at it. One thing I like about this lathe, it's got a foot pedal with a, just a soft brake on it, so it breaks it down to, to a stop nice and quickly. I'm aiming to go just slightly under 10 millimeters, ideally sort of 10 point, uh, 9.95, something like that. So about 12, two to go. thing didn't release. <laughs> Shit. Oops, stop swearing. Okay, where are we? Let's try and get this out. 
<sighs> man. <sighs> this machine, let me show you here. This is the uh, release mechanism for, for the auto feed. So you've got, you, you engage it with this lever here and pull this to release, which I did. And it obviously was just sticky enough that it didn't quite, didn't quite work, didn't quite release. Oh man. So what do we say about So what do we say about this not working straight away? Well, there we go. Um, looks like I've... I need camera one, camera three. So, you can see what it's done. It's dragged the, it's, as it came in, it hit the collar and then dragged this in diving it into the into the work until it ground to a halt because the one of the really nice things about a belt driven lathe it, the belt slips so luckily you don't get anything like the the really destructive crashes that you get on a on a more powerful machine or a, or a gear driven machine so i can i guess i can just whip this off and start again start again with a different tool holder different insert Okay, let me just grab the hacksaw. I'll just chop that off with a hacksaw. There's not much left of it. In the meantime, let me just quick, quickly check the comment section. My screen goes away in the meantime. So, slight mod to your patch, seriously. Good thing this wasn't a three or four draw chuck. Yeah, you're certainly right there. Is the collet destroyed? Mm, no, I think I've just probably made an ugly scar in the front of it. Adapt, improvise, overcome. Yep, much damage. Yeah, not too bad. No rotations left on the insert. I'll have to have a look. Uh, yeah, I think it's just tugging the part. Now it did definitely take out some of the collet, but luckily the, these collets are not hardened, so it'll, it, it's fine. Teeth left on the saw? No, not really. Get inserts trash, no need to rush. Could watch this for hours. Well, that's nice. <laughs> anyway, let me go and check my insert drawer and let's switch this insert out. Back in one sec. Inserts. Love, love life TV. So much pressure. Boy, you you got that right. Yeah. So yeah, I didn't only, can we see this here? Oops, it's recording. I didn't only, uh, oh, let me show you this. Here we go. So not only did the insert get its uh, tip taken off it, but also I ground a wee bit away of the tool holder. 
But these are like the cheap, cheap and crappy tool holders I bought when I first got the mini lathe. So not like it really matters. Yeah, I did, uh, I have set up the maho so that I don't actually have to do anything except like uh, start it, push the button and let it go. Yeah. Let's switch back to the... Oops. It seems like this, uh, the switching unit, if you switch to, if you like, by mistake, get a bounce on the key, you get a sort of half a, half a screen wipe, which is uh, something I'll have to be careful of. Yeah, sorry for the not terribly professional uh, <laughs> work today, but this is why this is the free live stream. <laughs> Oops. There was still an, a corner on this uh, insert, that's good. Oh, we didn't get to see the insert, wrong cam. Okay, thanks, just a sec, I'll just, uh, I'll hold that up in a sec. There we go. You can see how I've given a nice little polishy grind along the edge of it as well, huh? Oops. Luckily it was a crack one. Uh, oops, I should be on, yeah. Camera three and camera one. There we go. So back over to the lathe. Let's set up again. Okay, where was I? Ah, yeah. Let's start that again from scratch. Yeah, you can see I've taken a gouge out of the front of that collet. Just realized this whole tool holder is like rotated. Let me grab the tool. Actually, I should make sure that it's halfway square because I'm going to be parting and if that's not square it's going to be a problem for parting. Right, that's again prepared that little dish in the end. Now, where's my tool? Right, this time, oh, I'll put on two. 
So this time, two and one. What I'll do is, as it reaches the, the end of the cut, I'll not only pull the release switch, but I'll also be pushing back on, the, on this, this as well. I have had that in the past as well. Like if, the, if it doesn't release, once it starts crashing and the, the pressure comes on, then it can't release. So it's not, a, not an ideal piece of design that, or it's probably just worn out, it's old. So setting that back up again. I am quite jealous of those people who do YouTube live streaming or like game live streaming where they don't have to move around in a, in a building, they don't have to like do multiple setups, it's just everything at a desk, but hey, where's the fun in that? Weird little bit of extra cut on the end there. Okay, we're back down to about just under 12. close that was bloody close looks like I just made it or maybe I took another evening evening up pass on that collet it's cutting quite consistently I'll do a pass of a half a half a millimeter and then I should have just slightly under a half a millimeter to go. We've already been at 30.
pretty hot. Let me just cool this down. I'll just get some water on a cloth. Right, well that's cooling. Let's have a look at the uh, Videos of you fixing that feed release, yeah, yep. Any reason not to cut left to right? Um, yeah, there wasn't really much of a reason, was there? Oh, does it feed left to right? No, um, the bolly is, is, was produced and sold with either change wheels or a fine feed mechanism. So while, while that's uh, cooling, let me just set this up for the fine feed mechanism uh, to show you what I got. So yeah, what we've got here, this here is a, there's a, a belt, like a, just a normal pulley coming off the main spindle shaft, driving a worm gear, uh, or no, crown gear to a worm gear drive, which then drives the, the lead screw. So uh, this, this, when you've got this module in, in place, you don't have the normal change gear system, so you also don't have the banjo, which would allow you to reverse the lead screw feed. So with this setup, I've got no way of uh, cutting in, cutting left to right. No. Lost the video. Are we back on? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, here we go. This is why we do test sessions rather than <laughs> rather than the real thing, huh? Oh man. Wait a minute, that's not coming up. Okay. Yeah, a lot of technical issues tonight. Let's see if, whether that's cooled down already. Let's go to camera two. My setup camera. Okay, it's now cool enough. Ten point four. Yeah, ten point four. Got this weird little drop off at the end by nearly three tenths. I wonder whether that's one of the burrs in the bed of the lathe. Like there's some quitting, I mean I have dressed them, but I'm wondering whether it's riding up on a piece of wear or something, because it seems to be transmitting that same bump into the work in the same place every pass. Um, this will probably be machined off anyway as part of the square, so it doesn't really matter, but I'll see if you can get you in to see that better. Yeah, that's this. This, this from, from here to the tip is about three tenths under size. I'm not sure why. Okay, so that was a cut at, at uh, three, five on the dial. So now I need to take four tenths. One, two, three, four. Oops, nah, I'm on the wrong camera. Nope, still the wrong camera. This is what I was trying to say. See, there's a little mark here at about this spot. It's uh, about three tenths from the end, uh, three, I don't know, probably eight millimeters from the end. And that end piece is about three tenths of a millimeter smaller than the rest of the shaft. And that's where I was wondering whether it's been riding up on some piece of wear on the bed, because uh, it is a pretty heavily worn bed, this one. Right, last cut.
This time, that's moved. And now I've got a, a shoulder in here. Ten point one. Yeah, that's well under size. Th this is all going to be machined away, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, how are we looking down this end? Yeah. Let me just give this a, t a quick rub down with some emery cloth to take that last like tenth off, and then we'll be ready for the next. Then we'll be ready for uh, for putting it on the mill. <laughs> Okay, so next up, cut off tool. And for this, we want to be in back gear, which is this lever here. Let me just grab some cutting oil. Shemp for that if I can. I'll use a file. Back here. So, there's the first uh, first piece, or the first ex, uh, first operation. What's it taken me an hour? No, 37 minutes to, to to for that. That's pretty sad, huh? Just flipping over to the um, comment section. Is that a turret carriage stop? No, that's just a normal just a normal one. That shoulder lifting to the left. And the fact that it exists is, is, is alarming. That shoulder lifting, shifting to the left. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this is a very, very heavily worn lathe. It's really not in great condition. Um, yes, Bill, you should do a, you should do a YouTube channel. Um, Rolly cart, every time man needs a hobby, blah, blah, blah. Tool holder, check, please. Ah, oh, yeah, could be, could be. Um, anyway, let's let's move on to the second operation. So, I need camera two to show the setup. Move move my move my light over a little. Get better lighting. Let's take 
this stuff away. It's not needed. Actually, while I'm doing this, I'll just uh, turn off the lathe because I need the power socket behind the lathe to plug in the maho. And while that's booting, I'll show you my little setup here. I think I'll move this out of the way. Cable around here so I don't trip over it. Okay, so camera one, here we are. As you can see, I've already got my, um, what's I'm gonna call it, my indexer set up in the vise. And I set it up facing down about two and a half degrees, just because you want that little bit of back relief so that the tool doesn't rub as it goes in. So. Now to set the tool, uh, to set the part, I, I got this set up um, here. So this gives me a stop, because that's how I, set up the, um, this I set up the CNC mill in advance. There we go. So hopefully that should be okay. Right, going back to tool, to this one, we're now ready to home the machine. Put this on top, so. Make sure there's nothing to, to, to run into. I've got the machine set up so it, uh, it does its initial homing at relatively low speed. I just figure it was safer. You know, make sure there's nothing sitting around on the floor that it'll dr drive one of these things into. So, let's see if it's got my setup right. We want to go to a G0 to X0, Y0. And let's do a, I'll just do a uh, wind up the override. Okay, that's where I thought it was gonna be. So next, let me get, bring you in here again. Oh, I was already on that clay. So, um, I've already got a program written. Oops, this one back out program we want to load a program and I called it seven millimeter square rotary brooch all it does is goes down cuts across comes back up super simple um, so it starts at Z50 so let's head on up to Z50 just so I don't get any surprises G0, Z50, we're currently at Z27. 
So it'll go up. Okay. Um, so here we go. Let me just set that camera up again. But this gets, it gives you a bit of a taste of what it's like to actually run a, or to do, do the whole YouTube thing. I'm constantly moving this, uh, moving this studio stand around, setting up, adjusting angles, shoot, you know. I probably spent half the time machining just, just moving cameras around. That's kind of part of the way it works. Okay, that gives us that. Maybe a slightly wider view. So, let's start by dialing back the feed override. Right really low, and we'll start the program. So it's just moving to its start position. Get some coolant going. Distance to go 25 millimeters, that still seems believable. Distance go one, yeah, that's good. Now it should race across. Okay, it moved, huh? Not tight enough? Ah, man. That's frustrating. There's one of the disadvantages of this indexer, which I picked up from just some random guy here in Vienna who had happened to have the Bolly collets, which this also takes. Um, it doesn't have an anti-rotation pin. Collets, let me show you. Lathe collets always have a slot machined into them, so you'll have an anti-rotation pin, so as the, as the uh, torque, or the, the collet closing tube pulls the, the collet into the chuck, you don't have to, you don't have to fight it, it's got a, something to stop it rotating. This doesn't have one, and therefore it is difficult to get it tight and not slipping. Grab my tools. This is pretty, pretty funny, I guess. The whole, you set all this up, you practice it all afternoon. <laughs> that just doesn't work on race day, huh? Yeah, now that's definitely turned. Hmm. It's, I mean, it started cutting and then veered off. What I might do is also uh, reduce the depth of cut and cut it in two passes. Here's the, here's the wide view again. Let's edit that. You kind of see why the guys like um, Album 79 and they don't live stream, huh? <laughs> or at least not trying to live stream their machining. Or do they? Okay, let's take a look at this. This, this here, we, if we go in and edit it, 
Um, it's going down minus, it's only going down 1.2 millimeters, but let's just halve that for a first cut. Z minus 0.6. Um, and would it help, because at the moment it's climb cutting, maybe it'll help with the, with the loads if I change the direction. So if it goes from minus 10 to plus 10, rather than the other way around. Let's try that. Save that. Okay. Quick check of the comments section. Crowd is asking for a vice check. So, what's a vice check? Bingo, check the chat, the vice moved. Aha, the whole, you mean the whole, the whole vice shifted? Did I not tighten it? Ah, okay. Thanks guys. When I mounted the vise earlier today, I guess I got to the point where I should have tightened it and didn't. Let's try this again, shall we? This really helps. I should have you guys along all the time, huh? The vise moved, the vise moved, the vise moved, vise moved. Sure seemed like it over here, but we're behind it. Yo, the hot, yes, the whole vise. Yep, the whole thing. Okay, let's try this again and see what happens. Which probably also means um, I'm, it's not going to cut where I think it cuts, but that doesn't matter. I can increase the depth of cut. Does that matter? No, because it must have moved this way, right? To move to the, I guess it moved to the left, didn't it? So if it moved to the left, then I'm just cutting further out. It doesn't affect my depth of cut. It's just my zero position's gone. Well, let's, um, better idea, let's index it to the other side. And let's retouch, let's retouch off. So we're now at x equals three, and it was showing 0 0.09, so it moved about four millimeters in total. Okay, zoom that back up. Let's see what else the comment section's got for advice for me. So I suppose the vice being square isn't super important, correct? That's why the, but it's the, the vice is on keys anyway, so the squareness is 
unless it's uh, and that, that wouldn't be enough machining load to to break you know to, to really damage it out of square so I'm not worried about that um, yeah as I say it's on keys so I, it, it only will have pushed along the table um, yeah let's try that again thanks guys So dialing down the feed rate and let's get started. Six to go. Okay, that's not the sharpest cutter, but I wonder if I wonder if I've damaged the cutter with uh, with that abuse. It's also I needed to go to what that's at Y zero uh, at Z zero, and I need it at Z minus five, don't I? Here we go. Um, let's try that again. Let's just edit that and go to. Not, I need to go to X, X minus five, X minus five. Because I need to cut about, I need the cutter to go in about uh, nine and a half millimeters. So I'm setting it up, I want to cut about a 10 millimeter um, shoulder on there. Okay, second run, second pass. Let's try that. It's kind of a cool design this, it's got um, this spring-loaded plungers in the body which, which drive out and lock and then this ring is just a bunch of pins to push on the end of those plungers and there's a number of them so it's, it's really quite, quite rigid, it had almost no, well basically zero play. I'm guessing it was probably an apprentice's job at some stage. Unfortunately, it's, someone's hammered on it and looks like it's been used as an anvil. But um, I'm actually quite tempted to remake this for the collets of the Shaublin because it's such a cool design. As you'll see, I'm, I'm not cutting the square anywhere near to completion because I need plenty of uh, grinding allowance still. 
Now that, that cutter I reckon probably took a da some damage, but I'll just hit it with a, hit the burrs with a with the file before I remove it, and it needs heat treat treating anyway, so I'm not too worried about the the quality of the cutting at this stage. file. Well, that's not exactly pretty, but it's going to get gr uh, heat treated and ground anyway, so let's just whip those burrs off. Filing left-handed because of the uh, because of the camera. All right. Can I get this off with reaching around the camera? Yes. See, and you can see the couple of degrees of back relief there. And a bit of dishing in the tip. Yep. Right, second operation finished. Maybe it really bad happens near me, blah, 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 blah. Keys, whole customs cracked and moving. Yeah, yeah, please guys, don't give me all the, don't tell me all the nasties. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> okay, setting up now for heat treating. Switch this around. Oh, need to shut down the, shut down the Maho. Let me show you that. So, camera two. Oh, sorry, camera one. So to shut down the Maho, it's just uh, drop the e-stop, exit Linux CNC, uh, exit GMOC Pi or yeah, Linux CNC, and then it's just a normal uh, Linux shutdown. Linux shutdown. People always tell me I, sp I say it wrong. Once that's completely shut down, then Just a sec, there we go. And now I can turn off the machine and unplug it because I'm gonna need that plug for the Klaxon. So, this camera can now come around for the, for the heat treat. This one can also be switched over a bit since we're not going to be doing anything more on the other machines. Okay. I'll switch cameras. Just a normal basic heat treat. This is just for, just my, for starting. Need the Yep, it's not good. Let's start that again.
got my, my gate stuck open and therefore I've got too much airflow. Let me just loosen that off. That's better. Where's my, yep, it's cold. Yep, hard as, hard as glass. So, next up, I do need one more operation, whoops, I do need one more operation over here. Probably better do this on camera three. So I do need one more operation here on this lathe and that's just to polish it. So that I can see the, um, can see the oxides. Set that up. Number one, need to switch collets here as well because that's the 14 millimeter collet and I've now need the 10 millimeter which is in the Maho. Just a sec. There we go. Here, here there's a key, so if you, once you've got it aligned, you don't have to worry about holding it in ro against rotation. Oh, I guess I probably should have taken the tit off the end of it, shouldn't I? Oh well. I can grind that off on a grinder afterwards. Ah, unplugged. Plugged it back in. I also forgot to put the anti anti oxidation snot on it, but Just need enough clear metal to see the oxide color forming at the tip. I'll be heating from the bottom and looking for a straw color at the tip. Oh, look at that. 
there's a defect from that when that part first moved. So that's probably actually scrap, but I'll finish the job anyway because it gives me some practice set up and then I'll make another one off camera later. Well, tomorrow. All right, tempering. Let's move this camera back. So I don't mind if the shaft gets too soft, it's not important. Oh, you know what I didn't do? After I changed the tool path, I never, re I never took the second path. I never so took the second cut, so that's why I've got that, that mark still in there. I never went down to full depth. It just means I'll have to grind more. Instead of grinding, I, I left a grinding allowance of about 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Whoa. Ah. Idiot. <laughs> Not watching what I'm doing. This is the color I wanted up here. That blue is probably too soft. Yeah. Well, I'm going to finish it anyway because next we'll do the grinding process. It gives me a chance to practice it. And if I need to make another one from scratch, then I'll do it off camera and hopefully make fewer mistakes. If you ever read chat, I do appreciate doing this live. That must be maddening, but it's entertaining. Yeah, I bet, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, work faster, work faster. Yeah, no, I think um, I, I, I'm really truly impressed at people who can do this sort of thing without mistakes, um, you know, first with, you know, both the live streaming and also the doing this sort of stuff, but especially trying to do both at the same time, I am finding rather challenging, but hey, Let's see. So, back to camera two. While I need to take the indexer off the mill. So, as you can see, I've got my little vice set up here on the, on the klaxon. Need that collet back again. Hey, do you, any, any of you guys know how many times can you harden and temper uh, silver steel before you start getting into grain problems? I mean, I'm guessing I could probably, I'm guessing I could probably even re-harden this re, and then re-temper it, but um, yeah, as I say, it's just a test piece now, I'd say. Right. So camera one. What I've done, I've used the swiveling 
portion of the, the um, three angle vise and set this off about two and a half, three degrees off the center line. So once again, give me my back relief. Because I've left such a massive machining allowance now, it probably doesn't matter if I just eyeball this, but if I put a square on it, I should be able to get pretty close to the, oh, it doesn't quite reach. Um, just block that up. Okay, it looks close enough. Tighten that up a bit. Luckily here you don't have to be super tight because it's only grinding. What's that top view like? Oh, let's move that a bit. Now this is going to be horribly noisy because I'm going to turn on my vacuum cleaner. In fact, before I do that, I'll just shut the garage door. Just had that slightly open so that it didn't, uh, uh, didn't uh, suffocate with that blowtorch blasting. Okay, are we on the right? No, we're not. We need to go on number two, and let's have a look at the grind. So turn your audio down. This is going to be horribly loud because my vacuum cleaner sounds terrible. Then again, it also helps if the grind is plugged in. At the moment, I've only got one three-phase power socket, one three-phase power socket in this room. Well, you can, you can see this is not a modern safety device. I turned it on before, plugged it in, and it started running. Modern machines don't do that. Right, earplugs in.
Right, well that vacuum cleaner is the worst. It's actually the one device that goes through the whole house loudest of everything and makes the worst sound. So let me just uh, switch there. Since this since this is so oversized, I've been thinking about it, and what I think I'll do, oops, um, let's take this back over here. So, camera three. So, what I think I'm going to do is is heat treat this again harden it again because there's enough meat on there it's so oversized that I should be able to still save this part but I'm not going to do it now I think you've you've got the idea so this is a this is effectively the bit of a rotary brooch it goes in a machine slightly off axis and then gyrates its way in and you can see these sharp little cutting edges would chomp their way down through making a nice square hole yeah, and there we go. That's uh, <laughs> that's it. Let's um, let's just go to the comment section. Rustinox. Oh, hey, Rustin. Uh, hey, Michael. Great to see you there. He could have started with a piece of round high-speed steel. Yeah, you know, I did go through my old scrap uh, 10 millimeter end mills, but this tool needs to be about 45 millimeters long because it has to stick out of the uh, rotary brooch exactly 20 millimeters for the center to be in the right like center of gyration and what I found was none of my none of my um, high-speed steel broken end mills was long enough so that's why I went with uh, this plus everyone on YouTube loves to see fire the second camera back there is out of focus the second camera uh oh sorry uh, thanks to the shooting you know how much of it Thanks very much, Luis. Um, I was in a stream a couple of weeks ago where the cat in the background went meow and half a dozen people said the cats came running. <laughs> um, by the way, is it my thing or Max? His lips say a half a second behind his voice. Okay, a bit of delay. That's good to know. I can set, I can fix delay in, in that, uh, that Atom Pro. Um, actually, just a sec. Yeah, this device does let me set a delay. Now, what I've done, at the moment I'm running my audio directly into here, but I'm also using the, um, the laptop's camera as one of my cameras. So, yeah, that, that's the one that's probably delayed. Just as a test, let me just point this at myself and do a lip read and just do a... And I'll check that afterwards just to check whether that uh, that's which which of the um, which of the audio and vid video needs to be um, which needs to be delayed. The laptop camera, yeah, yeah, Alexander, I think that's probably right. Um, okay. Well, guys, I think I'm about done. It's been rather nerve-wracking. Um, didn't work as smoothly as I would have liked, as you probably can guess. Uh, but you get the idea. This is a day in the life of uh, the Rotary SMP workshop. Nothing ever seems to work as well as I like. But hey, I really appreciate all of you who, uh, who came and watched. I see there are 22 new members, so awesome guys. I, I really appreciate the support. Um, it really does help me. Uh, things like getting this uh, this ATEM Mini is, was bought out of uh, the support from guys like you. And yeah, I try and do one live stream a month, uh, all different subjects. Once you join, uh, hopefully you'll get access to all of the existing live streams. And thanks very much. I'll see you guys. <laughs> next time hopefully you sleep well